is Miss Jasmine here, and I am here to bring you, of course, another lesson. Uh, before we get started, um, I'm going to do my joke, but this joke is connected to what we're going to be talking about today, so let's get it started. All right, so Batman walks into a superhero-only pool. He is quickly stopped by a guard. The guard points to a sign that says, no swimming without super vision. You get it? Super vision? <laughs> okay. All right. Anyway, so we're going to be talking about Batman today. We uh, are going to continue our lesson and finish it about superheroes and how God wants us to be super. So we're going to be looking at another aspect of how we can be super for God. Um, and we're going to be using Batman as our basis here so let's before we get started let's see how well you know batman all right so we're going to do a little bit of trivia to kind of get our feet wet before we get into our lesson so our first question is what city does batman call home is it gotham city metropolis star city central city The right answer is Gotham City. All right, so that's where he calls home. All right, so this one might be a little bit harder. What were Batman's parents' names? Okay, what were their names? Was it, is it Barney, <laughs> Diane Prince and Steve, Jonathan and Martha, Thomas and Martha? This one was a little harder. Okay, his parents' names were Thomas and Martha. Those were his parents. So if you didn't know that, now you know. All right, what is Batman's secret hideout called? Is it Arkham Asylum, Fortress of Solitude, the Batcave, the Hall of Justice? Okay, I think you got it right. It is the Batcave, right? Pretty simple. Okay, what is the full name of Bruce Wayne? So that's Batman's real name. Bruce Wayne's butler. So what is the full name of Bruce Wayne's butler? Is it Alfred Pennyworth, Lex Luthor, Oswald Cobblepot, <laughs> Cobblepot or Raz Al Ghul? I don't know if I said, it, said that right, but... Okay, so the answer is Alfred Pennyworth. Alfred, that's what his daddy said. <laughs> okay, um, our last one is what primary weapon does Batman use? Is it a batarang, a bat claw, an explosive gel, a line launcher? What you think? It is a batarang, so it's that thing that looks like a bat. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I hopefully you got all those right. If not, that's okay. If we don't know it, then we just learned something new. So let's see how Batman connects to us being super. So Bruce Wayne, like I said, that's his original name. Uh, he didn't have the most. He didn't have what most superheroes have, so that's why the joke I said was a little bit funny because Batman doesn't have, like, human superpowers. He's, like, a regular dude that just decided he was <laughs> going to be a superhero, okay? Um, so he doesn't have supervision. He doesn't – he can't make himself invisible. He can't climb and scale walls or swing from webs. None of that, okay? Uh, unless you count money as being a superpower, I mean, that's pretty much what he had. <laughs> um, but he didn't have any superpowers. So he was an ordinary man, and he was just dressed up in his suit. And he had some really cool gadgets. Uh, of course, he also had the Batmobile, right? But he didn't have that superpower, okay? So one thing he did have, though, so he didn't have a superpower. He couldn't fly. He couldn't make himself invisible, all that stuff. But what he did have was a sidekick. He had a helper, and his friend, do you know what his helper was? 
his, yeah, Robin. So his helper was Robin that he had alongside of him. So we're going to put a pause on Batman, and we're going to be looking at another superhuman in the Bible. So in the Old Testament, there was a man you have heard of named Moses. So we know God used Moses in an incredible way to lead the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt. So Moses wasn't any super or special. He was just really ordinary. Um, in fact, many people think uh, he may have stuttered. At least that's, you know, he had said, God, you know, how was God going to use him when he had a problem talking? Let's see what God said to him uh, when he said that. So we're going to be looking at Exodus 4, 10 through 15. And it says, Moses said to the Lord, pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. The Lord said to him, who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. But Moses said, pardon your servant, Lord, please send someone else. Then the Lord's anger burned against Moses. And he said, what about your brother Aaron, the Levite? I know he can speak well. He is already on his way to meet you and he will be glad to see you. You shall speak to him and put words in his mouth. I will help both of you speak and will teach you what to do. Okay, so when Moses tells God that he can't talk well, did God give up on him? No. And did God fix Moses? Not at all. No, he didn't. So what did God do? Yes, God gave him a helper. Someone to go with him, his brother, Aaron. So going back to Batman, so Batman had Robin, Moses had Aaron, and did you notice God said he would be with them too? So even though they had each other, they weren't by themselves. So you may feel like you're just an ordinary kid and with nothing special about you, but you are so wrong, okay? Okay. So God loves to choose ordinary kids just like you to do super great, incredible things. We don't need superhuman power when we have Jesus with us. And we know that our helper through Jesus is also the Holy Spirit. So when we belong to Christ, we also belong in God's family. When we are Christ, we will never be alone again. So think about this. Think about some of the people God has placed in your life to help you. Maybe your parents, an older brother or sister, a teacher or a friend. Now think about who are you being a helper or a friend to. So remember when we have Jesus, he promises to stay with us. We are not alone. So if you have already accepted Jesus into your life, then your prayer can be that you see how God is needing to help you. It could be uh, in your homework. It could be getting along with your siblings or with your parents. It could be um, maybe you feel like you have no hope when it comes to what you want to do in the future. God can come in and help you with that and open your eyes to what he has already planned for you. But if you haven't taken the first step in accepting Jesus Christ into your life, we're going to do that right now because we definitely need a helper to get through this life. There's going to be times that you're going to just feel like you're alone, especially in the time that we are in now. You know, it just it's more it's easier to feel like we're by ourselves when we can't go and do the things that we used to be able to do. So if you just pray this prayer with me, then you will be saved. Now, you may not feel anything special right away. But God is with you. Okay, so go ahead and say this prayer with me. Uh, dear Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. I believe you died and rose again. Come into my heart. Make me new. Thank you, Jesus. In your name, amen. That's it. So God is with you. And... Just like you talk to your friends and your family and your siblings every day, you can talk to God every day, too, even if you don't see him. And if you need to see something physical to feel like you're talking to God, you can talk to a stuffed animal 
or to your action figure or whatever, but God knows you're talking to him, okay? So that's the end of our superhero short little series. We are going to be bringing in something completely new in our next week coming up. But until then, go out and be great, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.